that? I said, where, where do we find you in the world? Where, where are you? Uh, Northwest where are you, Montana. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, sure. We have snow yet there? We did. We had a beautiful snow. It all melted the last few days, but that's at, that's at lake level altitude of 3,000, just about 10 miles from here. The ski slopes are opening today. Okay, good morning all, and thank you for attending. We are going to go ahead and it's 8.01 in the morning. Uh, recording is on. We are going to go ahead and call this meeting to order, just so people are aware. This is our first time having a remote participant, uh, all legally set up. So welcome, Chris, in Kalispell, Montana. Uh, everything has been properly noticed, so Chris can count toward a quorum and can vote uh, in our meeting today. Okay, with that, roll call. I am here. Lynn Eisberg. Craig Heber is absent. Marianne, not yet. Chris Ronis. Here. Ray Rothrock. Let me know he wasn't going to make it. Uh, Jerry Sheffron. Here. Vic Schachter. Here. Bud Trapp. Here. Rob Young. Here. And Randy True. Here. Great. Thank you all. Uh, on to oral communications. Do we have anything from anybody in the audience, uh, in the online audience, that wishes to bring before the committee that is not on the agenda? Okay, hearing none, I'm going to close oral communications. I have one announcement uh, that is at our next meeting on, I believe, January 4, we will have elections for the next next year. Other than that, I don't have anything else. So we'll feed on with the meeting. Yeah, and elections for chair, vice chair, secretary for this committee. So Dale, we would do nominations and elections in the same meeting? Yes. Excellent. Okay, on to review and approval of the minutes. The minutes are attached. Do I have a motion for approval? Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Motion is approved. Thank you all very much. And uh, appreciate the tolerance for my bad minutes. Uh, on to item number five, town status report. Uh, the town manager, even though I think at our last meeting he said he would be here, uh, sent me a note he will not be here today, and but did say that he will have a status on all of these items next week. I mean, at the next meeting. Um, so hopefully we will we'll get some action on these items, which have been outstanding for about a year. Okay, item number six. Uh, search Woodside Fire Report. Do we have Selena or Chief? We have them not in the audience. Okay. Okay. Um, for the record, the Chief said he was unfortunately missed the meeting because he is tied up this time of year okay on to item number seven evacuation plan status and town council update um I have a little bit of background here at our last epc meeting there were con some some concerns by the epc craig taylor asked for a definitive list of those questions uh, those were sent to him. That list is in the, the packet that was sent out today. Earlier this week, I believe it was Monday, Craig uh, sent a response to that, which I distributed to the, uh, to the entire EPC uh, and will be attached to the, the agenda packet for the next um, 
committee meeting. Um, I don't want to go over the questions in detail because everybody is certainly aware of them and had plenty of time to read them. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to Rob. Do you want to go ahead and, and run with this or do you want me to turn it over to Craig and let him? I, I, why don't we turn it over to Craig and let him run with it for now? Craig or Joe? Yeah, I think we just came to answer questions. I, right, I mean, I, you got the written copy. Everybody got a chance to see it and the video. Would you like to make any comments about your response? Uh, not offhand. I mean, that was the response. So, so uh, general, anybody listening from the outside has not seen this. Do you want to make any comments for them? Um, I'm, I'm guess I'm here to answer questions if you ha have them for the committee. I mean, do you want me to read you my response? Uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure what you're looking for, Rob. Uh, just as if you'd like to make any. I, I just a couple of follow up questions. Use the mic. I, I have a couple follow up questions related to your response. Sure. Yeah. So and, this, I mean, this. And, and Jeff's here as well from the evacuation subcommittee. So we can both answer questions. Um, I'd like to understand what the plan with um, the evacuation plan was before uh, before April when, when Rob and I made a push to complete it in earnest. Um, in my PRA, large PRA request, uh, there was, and I just found this just like a month ago because there were hundreds of documents in it. Um, there was a draft of a plan from Jeremy Dennis, the former town manager. It was only a couple of pages and I think some members of this committee were aware of that, but mm -hmm. so there was some effort on that, and there's you know a long history of of evacuation concerns and a lot of and evacuation plan concerns, a lot of communication about it going back years. So where can you just describe? I guess my first question is just describe what the status was before we got we made this push to to get this plan a draft a draft of the first version of it completed. And then as a follow-up, I'd like to understand what your plan is now, because we made you know, some really serious efforts to contribute to this important area. And now we've been stalled out for six plus months and we didn't anticipate this. And I think we, we still, I, even with your response, I don't think we have any reasonable ex explanation. It just doesn't make sense. And so I'm really asking you, like, you know, earnestly to, to explain what the situation was before and then what your plan is now over the next, even say six months to a year before the next fire season. And who, who, who is gonna do what? What is the interaction? Because from my point of view, and I've expressed this I think many times that the process really went sideways. Um, and so can you, I guess, address those two sort of points? Sure, yeah. So on the history, I actually can't speak too much to the history. Um, Perhaps Mayor Alfstan. Yeah, I think that's going to work. These are good. I, I kind of doubt it. <laughs> that's why we sort of. Keep on. Um, yeah, Jeremy had drafted a plan, but um, I, I don't recall. We really had a specific plan for what to, to what we were doing with it. So, no, I don't really have any anything to add to that one. Can, can I just make some comments about the history? Sure. Um, I don't know if either of you were present during the presentation that the EPC gave, the special meeting that we gave on June 13th of this year. Um, at that meeting, uh, I had a chance to, to make some comments about the history and where we came from. So let me, this will just take a couple of minutes. Let me read to you uh, that history. In early 2022, a subcommittee of the EPC joined with the town manager, the San Mateo County Dam, Woodside Fire, the sheriff, and other organizations got together, at, hosted by the dam to pr produce an evacuation plan for Portola Valley. Uh, Jeremy was heavily involved in organizing that and focusing it. And so this was not done without the knowledge of the town of what the effort was gonna be. Throughout uh, 2022, twice a month, a series of meetings occurred in this evacuation planning group. 
And at the end of 2022, it was agreed that the evacuation template drawn up by Woodside Fire almost 10 years ago by Don Bullard would be used to form a formal evacuation plan. That Woodside Fire, with the assistance of the evacuation subcommittee of the EPC, would draw up an initial town of Portola Valley evacuation plan. The draft of that plan was what was presented that day. In summary, this evacuation plan serves as an, evacu an initial evacuation plan for the town of Portola Valley. Everybody fully understood that things would have to happen in the future and additional things would have to be added. We believe that it is an accurate reflection of our current preparedness and what would actually happen in an orderly evacuation should it occur in 2023, especially in this upcoming fire season. Our goal is to have an initial evacuation plan completed by the beginning of the fire season of this year for review by the town council. We expect that this plan will need timely continuous updates to improve it, account for more details that need to be addressed in the evacuation and incorporate other inputs to it. Summary also that we emphasize that this present first evacuation plan reviews the organization and command structure for how decisions will be made and controlled for a threatening hazard that would lead to an evacuation. It was not how to prepare only. It was how the command structure would actually work and how various people's responsibilities would be in there. A summary of the evacuation levels and resulting actions that everybody, including the town, needed to be aware of, how public information, information will be disseminated, a review of responsibilities for residents and other agencies involved in this, including the town, support inf information to educate all members of the town and evacuation information, and of course, a review of the evacuation routes. So that that is what was presented in June, June 13th in that special meeting. Um, again, I'd like to emphasize that this was not just a document for what the residents needed to do for preparation. It was a summary and a conglomeration of what everybody would do, Woodside Fire, the Sheriff, the town, the residents in that type of activity. In, in your response, and I appreciate very much your response, um, you emphasized uh, that this was more of a source of guidance and information for preparedness. It was not intended to be that. It was intended to be the beginning of commitments that would be made by the agencies that serve us and protect us, as well as what residents needed to be aware of and what the town needed to recognize is what would actually happen if a fire happened in that situation, okay? Um, we're, we're, we've got Don Bullard here today, so you can ask him direct questions himself about uh, what he felt that the purpose of this plan was and what, uh, what he felt was important in it. Um, certainly, the EPC subcommittee was educated heavily by Woodside Fire, the San Mateo County DEM, um, and the other agencies as to what would actually happen and what we should be prepared for and what the town should be prepared for. There are several other documents that point to this from the town. Uh, one of the documents, um, which is on the town website today, is the Town of Portola Valley Emergency Operations Plan. I don't know if either of you read this, but it's grossly outdated. Very few people know where it is. If, a, if an evacuation or a fire had to happen today, I really sincerely doubt if this would be followed or anybody would even know of its existence. This is one of the key things that needs to be updated in the next evacuation plan. My own personal situation in this is follows. Um, I think that the town of Portola Valley needs a, a formalized evacuation plan that the town embraces and that the town pushes this committee and other committees for what they want. 
um, it's not meant to just be something that's on the website that if somebody feels like looking at it, that they can. I don't understand what the town council wants us to do. I don't understand why <clears throat> the town attorney feels so strongly that uh, a, a, a plan like this cannot be formally, formally embraced by the town. I think it's important for it to do. It sounds like the town council does not feel that's the case. And thus, I think it's important for you to tell us if you think that this is it, that's, that's, that's fine, that's all we really need right now, or whether you feel that we need to have a, a, a new document raised that the town can formally adopt. Um, and I, I don't understand what the process can be that we can in all honesty approach with lots of work and effort to get done so that we know that we'll actually get something done. So anybody else on the committee that would like to make any comments on this? Yeah, I would. Uh, I don't know if it's appropriate or you wanna give them an opportunity to respond first. Okay. Yeah, yeah would respond. you prefer to respond first or? Well, at least a part of it. I'll, I'll, I'll say one, yes, sure. I mean, yeah. Rob, you said yourself, this is the beginning of a, a series of discussions and probably documents. I mean, I, as, as we said in our answer to you, the, something that we could adopt would be something like a memorandum of understanding between the town and Woodside Fire that actually that actually codifies some of these things because this is our plan, but Woodside Fire has some input into it. I know they, I know that the, the fire district did in fact was, was work with you a lot on this plan and we appreciate that. But like you said, it's the beginning of a series of conversations. And a lot of those conversations have to happen between staff because a lot of the operations will be done by staff. And so it's an important document and yes, other documents refer to it and it should be in the public domain, but the document itself is a template for other documents that could become formalized, partly because we're not a full service community and we rely on other agencies for certain things. And we have to have whatever, whatever, whatever we adopt has to be something that's agreed to between us and the agencies. And this, I mean, it's, it's a good document, but it needs, it would, a separate document would probably be more appropriate. Okay. Uh, one point that I hope that you understand is we were doing this for a long period of time with the understanding and the participation of Jeremy. Understood. Okay. Dale, can I uh, comment? I, I have a number of questions. I watched the uh, the so-called presentation of this plan to the town committee on the website, and I, I was, to put it politely, astounded. Um, I heard reference, Craig, by you to this this Malakut Mal Malakut plan or some other plan that you thought was uh, perhaps um, more appropriate in terms of its structure and to quote you uh, about uh, our suggested plan. Uh, you said it's all in the right direction. We need to get something to fit. Uh, quote, the issue is structure, uh, unquote, rather than the substance of it. Um, and that there was some reference that uh, there would be a next step to, to work, I assume, with EPC or whatever interested parties there were uh, to take it to that next step. That didn't seem to be a, a major step uh, because all was, quote, in the right direction. And uh, I must say, as a member of the EPC now for a couple of terms, um, I just, I'm just totally frustrated that uh, there is such good effort that's been put into this by so many good people and thoughtful people. And this town is without uh, a credible emergency plan. Uh, and I believe that the town council operates with people with good faith that share our concern, the anxiety in this town. Uh, and I just don't understand uh, how we can have a, a structure problem like this and nothing has been acted upon at, at this point in time. And I'll close with just one uh, observation. Uh, we don't have legal counsel uh, here. I, I don't understand what the legal, uh, from this response, I don't understand what the legal objection is. Um, it seems to me if the town council agreed with the thrust of this plan, it could certainly uh, act with some form of conditional approval to say, uh, we agree in principle with what's here. We understand it needs to be coordinated with other communities. Uh, and uh, we would take steps to uh, coordinate that because uh, we believe it is a good plan and so forth. So as I've expressed all too briefly, um, I have a number of concerns, notwithstanding what I want to reiterate. 
I believe is the good faith in town council. It shares our concern about getting this community ready. Heavens knows for an emergency that, that might arise. And I'd appreciate uh, any comments you'd have about the observations I've just made. Thank you. Oh, go ahead. Um, so first of all, I think we are committed to working forward on this. Um, it's what I put in my note. Um, we've got um, the seven, what we've been colloquially calling the seven plus 13 that we've been working with the fire department, which has um, working on an evacuation plan. So, and as Jeff said, this is something that we need to get the staffs together. And I think what you heard from the attorney was to make this actionable. We've accepted it's published, but that's not the thing where we're gonna say, okay, this department is committed. We can't commit the fire department, for instance, by saying, here's our evacuation plan. It doesn't work that way. So I think there's a, a sort of a mismatch in terms of the evacuation plan that's put forward. And if you look at Malibu or if you look at Austin, that's the other thing um, that I looked at. Um, Austin, when I talked to Kim, who's the new incoming fire marshal, she was saying that, that you know that seemed like a structure. So it's that kind of structure that we're going to get the different agencies to agree to. What structure, Craig? I, I don't understand what you mean when you say structure. I'd appreciate it. If you so, so you should look, I mean, and I'm happy, I mean, Rob has it, but I mean, you should look at, for instance, at like the Austin one. I mean, it's got a very clear structure for agencies to operate. Whereas the evacuation plan um, that was put forward by the committee is a combination of, it has some of that in it, and it has some history in it, and it has some individual preparedness in it. Um, and so that's why I think there's a lot of good information there. But putting it in a structure that we can basically take to the different agencies and have agreement among the agencies is important. Um, and I hear that you you guys sat down with all the different committees, but you know Howard went to talk to the head of the Dem, and he was saying at the time not to adopt it. And I've heard Rob say, well, he wasn't involved, but he still at the time he was the agency. He's gone. So he I, is I, I, so gone. I know, but but to at the, the time that is, yeah. that is fallacious information. I'm going to call you on that. Okay, it's not fallacious. And so this is the problem that either we can work together or we can work at odds. And it feels mostly like we're working at odds right now because I'm telling you the factual thing that happened when Howard talked to him. So I agree, he is not there now, but he was there and he was in charge of the Dem. So there is nothing fallacious. So I think you need to be careful about your comments yeah, because okay, that's, well, no, no, I'm, I'm just, so, because that's the difficult part here is, I really think this is important. I'm gonna make sure this happens, whether it's with you guys or without you, but the difficulty here is you guys are not making it easy to work with you. I mean, accusing us of stonewalling, accusing us of fallacious information, that doesn't help move this stuff forward. So if your goal is to get this moving forward, then we should be working together and getting the staffs to work together. There's a lot going on, so this isn't gonna happen instantly. But we did publish it. That was the request to make sure this got out there, that the information got out there. So that stuff is available. And you guys are saying, well, we can't do anything else until this gets approved. But there's lots of other things that could be done if you guys seriously want to do that. So I'm at this point a little bit frustrated that we're not figuring out what needs to be done and then move forward rather than just kind of fight about, well, here's the history and here are the other pieces. Can I, can I follow up there on my question? Uh, uh, Vic, can I, can I jump in here? Because there, there's something really important here, which, which is that th the reason that we're blocked and that we're at odds is because of the, the, the process and the problematic leadership and your decisions and principally, you know, you council member, you know, Craig Taylor as, as our council liaison. And I think Dale's point is, is, is very valid because you specifically highlighted that the head of the Dem did not support this plan and advised you to not adopt it. But that conversation that you failed to disclose that we interacted with the Dem extensively and, and the, the, the chief representative there, David Cosgrove, gave a, a glowing endorsement of the plan and interacted with us extensively on it. So by you mentioning a private conversation that you reached out to, and again, you reached out to the attorney in a private conversation. I reached out to the head of the dam. The head of the dam. Hold on, hold on. If, if for you to give the, the full disclosure of the context is 
is, is what's needed. Instead, what you do is you mislead the public about what's, what's actually occurring. And that's why, that's I think the major reason why we're at such odds is because, and, and I, do, I do think the, the fact that, we've, that this has been stalled out now for six months, and again, without a clear indication of what to do next. And if it was clear that to translate our plan into uh, another structure or, or a specific process, we would be happy to, to, to follow through and engage on that. In, in our first uh, subcommittee meeting, and in fact, our only subcommittee meeting, you provided a list of follow-up actions that you were doing, and we waited for those actions, but then you didn't do any of them. And then at our next meeting, you just said you weren't gonna, gonna support the, uh, the evacuation plan at the next town council meeting. And that's, and that's the problem is, I mean, we, we engage with this in good faith. And we can, look, we can understand if at some level, the, due to the staff situation, due to the other council, due to the council's priorities, if the evacuation work and making progress on it was not a priority for, for you or the council, but it was for us and we put a great deal of work into it. And simply by working with us constructively in good faith and, and clearly, uh, then, then we would have been able to make more progress. And we I, are continuing to try to make some more progress now. Can I make it's, a request? It's very difficult. But, but Jerry, would you mind? I, I know that Craig made a bunch of comments and that Don would like sure. to respond to those. Would you mind if <clears throat> Don went next? Don, would you like to make a comment? Sure. Yes. So, yes, we did, we did run a, a series of. Oh, it's that one. Okay. We did run a series of meetings twice a month throughout the, the year of 2022. And at that time, Don Matei started off working with us on those meetings, but then it was assigned to Dave Barnett and Brian Kelly. And as we all know, they've had a bit of a revolving door down at the Dem, but Brian, but Brian Kelly, both Brian Kelly and Dave Barnett both approved of this plan as well as Captain Fox from the Sheriff's Office. So this has been vetted through the Sheriff's Office and the Dem. And the person that Don Matei assigned this to, who was Dave Barnett, as well as Brian Kelly, who are both gone now, as well as, as Don Matei, uh, gave the stamp of approval on this plan. So I think it's a good plan to, to start with, to adopt. It does have some guidance and some education in it, which I think is good because the, the people of this town will understand how we operate as an emergency service. And that's not to say that we can't have timely uh, updates to this that are continual throughout the future to morph it into more of what they expect as a plan. I, I heard uh, both the town council members here state that they wanted an MOU, and I don't think that that would be a problem to draft an MOU. I know the fire district approves this plan and we'll, we'll sign on to an MOU. And you know I don't know whether the Dem will or not, but I know that the the sheriff's office is approved of this plan, so I don't see that there'd be a problem with that as well. So it sounds like it, it to me, listening to the conversation, they want an MOU, a memorandum of understanding. And I don't see an issue with that. If we can draft that up, that should be able to be done quickly. So those are my comments. Uh, Jerry? Yeah, if, if I can just comment maybe at the thousand, 10,000 foot level. Um, it's my understanding the EPC's responsibility is to advise the council on things to do to make the town safer. And this is one obvious one. And it's been interpreted by the EPC to be a critical one, one that needs to be addressed now, not over a long period of time. And the frustration is that there was a lot of work done. And because of any number of valid problems with the council and the town and the employee status and whatever, things have ground down to uh, a very slow level. <clears throat> but at the same time, the EPC who has done this work is not seeing a response from the council. That's a bit disempowering, kind of makes you feel like why are we doing this if the council is not going to respond, especially about something critical? The second comment I would make is it seems like the differences are minor. <clears throat> I mean, what the council is thinking and what we're thinking is probably pretty damn close 
to where we need to be. What's lacking is the urgency to get it done. And I think that the responses the EPC is getting from the community is they want a plan now, that this has to be moved up on the priority list in some way to get it done, even if it's <clears throat> imperfect and has to be revised in six months or whatever, that you can't have the town say, we do not have an evacuation plan given the fire hazards and the other things. So my comment is <clears throat> we're almost at the finish line. Can we get this up on the priority list for the council and move it through and get it done? <laughs> and if not, why? And, and I, I just think the personalities have caused more problems than they need to. This is just not about personalities. It, it's about process. Yep, I and, agree. And, and we, we just want see some urgency on the council side or to tell us they don't think it's urgent and and then then we got a whole different set of problems but i don't think you would uh, comment that way yeah no and i don't i mean cer certainly personally i don't believe that i don't actually think council believes that either um so multiple pieces there the information's out there so i mean there's there's a piece of it to me that it's like i don't think the world is going to change overnight now that this information is out, you know, like people see this information. So for residents that need it, that information is available and they know what's going on. The different agencies have worked together. So presumably they're going to act on this if this is something that they all think is the right thing. So it feels to me like in terms of actual operational aspects of it, that we already have those pieces. So you're right. The piece we're talking about is how do we move this through to something where we adopt it, which the advice we were getting from the attorney is an adoption is gonna be more like an MOU because it's dealing with responsibilities between agencies. And Jeff and I are both committed to move that forward. The other piece, as you all know, is right now, I mean, staff is in a little bit of crisis. So the idea that it would just magically happen among all the other things that they're doing, I think it's unrealistic. Um, not that it isn't important and urgent, but it's just unrealistic that it's going to happen right now. So we need to move forward. And yeah, I would love for the subcommittee or the larger committee or a reconstituted committee to work with the council so that we can come up with a timeline so that we set some expectations. I think that's perfectly reasonable. But I do think the information's out there. Um, so I'm a little less concerned that somehow people have no idea what to do. Like that doesn't feel right to me. Craig, I, th I think that if you told the town, you'd find, you know, 3% or 4% who have actually read it. Sure. It's not like people think there's a plan out there. It, it's invisible, even though it's published. What it needs is Draft the council's plan. endorsement and, and education and push to tell people what to do when the evacuation is needed. So there is that big step. And I, 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 agree, I agree. I don't know how you guys fix your priorities. I'm glad I'm not in your position because it must be a nightmare given all the stuff that needs to be done. So you just need to tell us that it matters that you are going to push this as hard as you can to get it done. And to me, that would be enough with a timeline. I don't want to hear it a year from now it might get adopted but you know that we're really got people aggressively working on it and it's got to fit into all the other mini disasters that we're trying to solve. That's my view. Yep. I know, I know maybe. Yeah, I, uh, what I think the town knows is it's a draft plan, not a plan. And I think that's the concern. Uh, it is for me as one homeowner with a residence in this town, and it is for a lot of people in my community of 30 families that keep asking me, where is the town with respect to a final plan of what we should be doing? So there is, notwithstanding the publication of this draft plan, uh, I can assure you there is a continuing anxiety in this town. And the, the time frame, <clears throat> notwithstanding the good efforts of all of you and your appreciation of its importance, has been absolutely frustrating for me as a member of this committee, and I'm relatively new to some of the others that are here. 
And what I heard when I watched the town council meeting, Craig, was that statement, which all in the right direction, we need to get something to fit. Uh, it's a question of structure, uh, indicating that there wasn't that much that needed to be done. I now hear the fire department telling me, uh, which is one of the agencies you refer to that needs to buy in, that they find this to be a totally appropriate plan. Uh, so th there's so many, and I don't know what the, the so-called legal objections are. I, this memo didn't discuss it, nor I, I, do I think we asked for it. But as a lawyer, I got to tell you, I'm very curious to know what legal issues there are, because the town council, I'm sure, if it wished, could act affirmatively on this plan, subject to any condition it needed, the condition speaking to another agency or coordination with the other agency. The town council constantly makes decisions which need to be coordinated with other town councils. That's what our town manager does and his staff, limited as it is. So, well, again, I want to reemphasize I have the greatest respect for the good faith, I really do, of all of you on the town council. And it's an enormous number of challenges, the enormous number of challenges you have right now. When it comes to the fire and the safety and the life of the people in this community, with the degree of threat that we have to fire potentially in this community, I can't think of anything that's quite as important as making sure that this is at least in the top priorities. And I am very, very distressed that notwithstanding everybody's good faith, that this has been just put off and the can has been kicked down the road constantly. Uh, and I really would urge the town council, and I'm gonna to move tonight, unless something else changed, to ask the town council to reconsider the adoption, the adoption of this plan. And with somebody there, I watched the, I didn't see anybody actually propose or speak on behalf of the EPC at the town council. Mm -hmm. Maybe that wasn't procedurally proper. No, it would have been. I'm sorry? It would have been. No, that's no, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure that. what the reason was, and I don't want to start think, pointing fingers, but with an appropriate representative of the EPC there, I'm going to move to ask for reconsideration of this plan in the hope that this will help, that this will move it forward. And we can do whatever we need to do in the interim uh, to try and fix whatever it is that, quote, is structurally inappropriate. Thank you. Then, Go ahead. Could, could the adoption of the plan occur with an understanding that the MOU would follow quickly? You want to speak or you want me? Cause, um, cause, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, if that's yeah. what legal said, and I, I'm just curious, does legal live in Portola Valley? Live here? No. Do no, they but work that's... in Portola Valley? Hmm? Do they work? Physically in Portola Valley? Yeah, yeah she, she comes regularly to Portola Valley. Okay. Yeah. Just so. I don't know. Right. Craig, is so. there a timeline that you can give us now or that you would in some very short period of time be able to lay out for the committee that says, this is what we're going to do and this should be adopted by next meeting? Sure. Well, so the, the issue here is the things that I think need to get done are staff level things. So Sharif needs to schedule that. So it's not my place to give you that schedule. Um, I'm supportive of doing it soon, but we need to get the housing element, which is the January piece. So looking at first quarter seems reasonable to me. Looking at it you know, at the next meeting, to me personally, doesn't. And Vic, I, you're certainly welcome to make whatever motion you want. I would counsel against it. Mm -hmm. I think that trying to jam this down the council's throat will create an allergic reaction. So I think working to figure out what the timeline is um, and exactly what you know what we want to do um, is an important piece. Because I haven't heard Don say that the fire district is going to adopt it. So I mean, you know, if you guys have time, maybe the thing to do is to go to the fire district and ask them to adopt this and see what response you get because that's where the attorneys are gonna get involved and they have an attorney and, and maybe you'll get a different response and maybe we as council members will get a different perspective on it than we're getting from our attorney. Um, but if our goal is to get the information out there, then I think we connect with these, the, the MOUs, we get that stuff, but that's really between agencies. Like that's just making sure that all the agencies agree that we're gonna behave this way and that we're sort of locking into it. And that's an important piece for the safety of the town. And in terms of the residents, Vic, the thing I don't understand is if we took out all the stuff that had to do with the residents and said, you know, this is what we think you should do, and it should go through, P, you know, um, 
PV ready, th that seems totally reasonable. But that's, you know, like, and if only 3% of the residents have read it, I mean, this is a little bit of, you know, bringing the horse to water. Like, I'm, I guess I don't see that the council saying, yeah, you know, residents should read this and now magically residents are going to read it. I mean, we said that this was an important document when we accepted it. So, and we put it on the web page because we do think I it's there. I don't think you accepted it. There was yeah, nothing I, done at that meeting. The there was no I, motion. I can, I can relay how, how progress on this and how the council's action and, in, you know, in particular. Randy, Randy, just a second. It, I just I want to point out a couple of things. In our memo to you, Craig, you asked for what we wanted. We specifically asked what were the legal reasons you couldn't adopt it. Right. You did not answer that question. You just said it is not standard practice. That means nothing to me. That means absolutely zero. What is the legal reason you did not adopt it? Have you got you, a legal opinion on this? No. We, can you share it? Can you share it? Well, and you saw it at the, did, if you watched the meeting, our attorney was there. She spoke to this, right? I mean. What I heard, Craig, was, was a reference to the fact that, uh, which is alluded to in the response, right. that we needed the approval of other agencies that might be affected. We don't have the authority to tell other agencies right. uh, to do it. That's perfectly understandable. Right. But that doesn't stop the town council from deciding to say, one, we believe it's an acceptable plan and we will initiate with other town councils uh, that may be affected by this an attempt to coordinate our efforts to make it acceptable. We've heard from the fire department, they see this as being acceptable. And what I'm seeing is this massive gap between the first step and the second that it seems to me it could go forward to coordinate if we need an MOU, put the MOU together. But instead what's happened is nothing no action that I'm aware of has taken place. And I don't know of a legal opinion that says you can't do this. That is coordinate no, in order to move forward. Right. And I'm asking the town council, as you represented here, to help us get that done because clearly we're willing to work to make that happen and it's not happening. And I'm gonna go back to item number three. We ask specifically, what are the specific changes the town council would like to adopt the plan? And your answer is, it would take a very different form than this plan. That's not specific. Are you saying, throw it out, start over, or take out section one, two, and ditch the rest? We want specifics. Okay. What does the so, council want us to do? Because at this point, I'm not only disappointed, I'm frustrated, and without guidance, I may accept a motion from this council to rescind the plan. Okay, well, this gets back to personnel. I, I, I think that's not helpful as well. Um, what I heard from you guys when I was here in September and earlier is we're exhausted. We don't have any more to put into this plan. What I would recommend, sorry, that we have any what? we're exhausted. We don't have more to put into this plan. So what I would recommend is if this committee is willing to work with the subcommittee, we could sit down and figure out what it is that we need to do next. And, and Vic, I like what you're saying, which is, we're not just a, saying, here's a plan, we're gonna just adopt it, but we're gonna say, here are the things that we need to make an, a co commitment to. And I think we can get the council to you know, agree to something like that. And that seems valuable to me. Um, to def I mean, because I think it's all there. And I think what I'm hearing you say is you want it to be more public and more on the radar. And I appreciate that, that seems reasonable. How, how about as a next step that we try to settle the legal issue once pretty definitively and seek an outside counsel uh, to, in addition, give, you know, particularly one that's experienced in this and consider the context and where the task is to find the viable legal pathway to accepting and approving what language to use, what potential li legal liability that puts on the town so that, the, so that we, can, we can understand and weigh the potential benefit of taking that formal action with potential legal liability and, and settle this legal issue because it's been such a blocker and such a source of friction. And again, we, we were- We don't know what the legal I, I'm, I'm gonna, is. So I, I, I'm gonna back up I don't a second think the, and say, okay. say, I really think at least from my perspective, we'd like to know what we need to do to change it. If we wanna work with you, that's fine. 
but what do we need? We're sitting here, here's a document. We said, oh, we need to change. What do we need to change? We have no idea. Right. I mean, got so no for direct. the record, I think it's important to get this in, in, in the record. After our subcommittee's meeting in on August 15th, I responded. I spent five hours the next morning and responded to every one of the 51 um, inline questions you put into the, um, the document. And, and that's, that's where it's been left because you prior, I think you were going on a 10-day vacation and you wrote an email, which is also in, in the shared public folder, um, saying what you would do next. And one of, one of the key things was clear up the legal issue. And, and connected to that was to consider acceptance versus adoption. It seemed like at that point that, that we had something of a plan to move forward. But then the next step was for our September meeting, we didn't hear any response on any of those action items that you committed to. And then you said here that you were going to not support uh, any approval or acceptance or any related to. So, that, so, so now, yeah. now I've never said that. So this is, this is where you, this is my frustration is you answered 51 questions. Many of them you said, well, we'll do that later because, you know, this is just a first draft. So you didn't actually answer some of them. Um, and then the idea that I said I wouldn't support this in any form is definitely not true. I was there at the meeting saying, you know, this is a reasonable thing for us to accept. I didn't support adoption because the information we're getting from the attorney is that this has to deal with other agencies. I think this is fixable, but it's a matter of working with staff to say, okay, if we're going to do MOUs with the different agencies, what form does it take? What stuff do we extract from this document to put in the MOU? Um, I think we can do all that. I think that's all doable. So going back to this earlier comment of, you know, can we come up with a path forward for next year? That seems reasonable to me. But if we want to keep going, it's like debating the legal um, niceties of this, then I would remind you that EPC is here to help the council get stuff done. We're not here to be responsible to you guys with legal opinions. Like that's not sort of the, the model in the town. And I feel like we've sort of gone sideways on that. Yeah. I, I think we have to keep our eye on the goal. And the goal is to get this approved and to figure out how we can support you and encourage you to get this higher on the priority list, knowing that there are priorities that are beyond my understanding. So um, not knowing when we're going to reach the goal is very frustrating for the committee, especially if I remember correctly, this was thrown on us. This is not considered to be part of the EPC's um, job. The, the council asked us to take this on, if I remember correctly, is that right or wrong? Yeah. Anyway, Can I just um, we just want to know when it's gonna happen and what's likely, when it's likely to happen. I don't know what the, gears that need to move within the council and the other things to get it done, but we're just not hearing that it's likely to happen in a month or six months or 12 months or 24 months. And that's very frustrating. Okay. Can I make Rob? just a quick comment? Uh, thank you for all your, your comments. Uh, I think they can be helpful. Uh, the, the thing that is still lacking is specifics. Um, this plan was given to Woodside Fire, the sheriff, the dam. They didn't officially put their, their stamp on it, but they wrote emails back that said, this is a good plan. I think that that's achievable, but you need to tell us what form you want it in. I've just got four, four things, okay. The second thing is you've said, but we're dying to, I mean, we want to help. We want to meet the expectations. You know, we have an incredible attorney here who wants to help and meet those expectations too. We need to understand specifics of what, I mean, I don't, I don't think that you want to have to filter everything that comes to us. Why not get us the specifics from this attorney so that we can understand why they don't feel it's acceptable or make arguments to it. In addition, you've said several times that, quote, we need to get the staff together. I know the staff's really busy. I know there, there's a lot to do. You know, basically, I understand that has to happen, but we don't know what to do. I mean, uh, if there's any way that you can try to get us information specifically, I mean, we're, we're not trying to be a pain in the ass here. 
We're trying to understand specifically what needs to be done so that this can get done. And so right now, I don't know what to do. I gotta be honest with you. And so if you can start to, to get more specific about, you know, in this section, there should be, we need help. Now, maybe this can happen for another year because we're too busy, but, and the, the, the comment that Jerry made about only 3%. Thank you very much, Jeff. I saw that you made, you and, and Craig and Don and Kim and I talked about, you made that, that comment. You know, everybody's worried about the, the Maui fires. We're looking for a way that the town council can start to help get the town to be educated in this, to pay attention to it, because it's gonna be a free for all right now because I don't think that people really understand what the sheriff will do, what the fire department will do. Um, and the town council needs to help push this out so that people will be educated. Did I summarize you correctly, Jerry? Yep. I, I, I think all of this is so, so close to the finish line. We just need some, some direction, some commitment, some timeline that tells us that we're, we're we're going to get there and we've got to get there soon. That, that's all we need, I think. So, so in September, the council did accept the plan, did agree that it should be made public, public as we can make it. And getting above that 3% is really hard on anything. <laughs> Having sent a lot of messages out over the last 10 years, I'll tell you, people just don't always, don't just, it's hard to get people to pay attention to these things. I mean, 3% of, of people might know about the plan. I think, I think 70% are on SMC alert. We have, I mean, a large number of people are actually on what's important, which is to get the information about when to evacuate and where to go. I think a lot more people are aware of WPV ready. I mean, it's just, there's different pieces to this. And I think most of the public really just wants to know what they need to do to be ready and when to leave. Um, I think we're a lot farther ahead on that part of it. I don't think they need to know about command structures and such. It's not that it's not important. It's just the majority of people don't need to know that detail. What and everything that's in that plan is, is either sort of in place in some form or has been acted on. I mean, our staff has been working, our staff constantly works with the fire district, the sheriffs and the DEM on training, on planning. I mean, Sharif was in a tabletop exercise last month, as I recall. Um, it's, it's happening all the time behind the scenes. It's not that it's not being done. It's not always being done publicly where people see it, but the important part is that our staff is trained. I mean, our staff is probably under trained right now on EOC operations. And that's something that I know Sharif is very concerned about. So. These things, you don't see it and I don't see it and it's not my job to see it or, or yours, um, but it's it's happening. Um, the council also agreed that, that they, they, agreed, they agreed with the attorney's advice, which is that this isn't something that's appropriate for adoption, but they also agreed it was important that it should be shared. And they also agreed that Craig and I should continue working with your subcommittee to, to turn this both into more actionable items and things that might be adopted in the future. Uh, I don't have a timeline for that yet either because it's dependent on staff. It's highly dependent on staff. Um, uh, but again, they, you know, I didn't hear anybody say this wasn't important. I also heard a lot of people point out that, that we have a lot of other things we're dealing with right now that are, are frankly just, just a little overwhelming at the moment, for, especially for the staff. So I think the council in September committed to continuing work on this and committed to, you know, they basically agreed that Craig and I should continue to work with you on it. Can, can I just ask a very simple question, I believe? Is this, uh, was there an opinion, an attorney's opinion about the uh, ability to adopt this plan and if so, uh, is there some reason it can't be made available? Since it's, she did, it's not a formal written opinion. No, she didn't write a legal brief on it. She, did she, she, did she express, I, I, I watched the meeting. I didn't, I didn't hear, I heard reference to an opinion. I didn't hear any opinion. She was, there, she, she explained, I believe she explained yeah. why it's not typical, why this isn't something that, that you would typically adopt. Well, that she said it's not typical. She didn't say it's uh, un, unlawful or impermissible. And I, I thought the theme was uh, we can't tell other agencies what to do, which- Part of it, would, yeah. Well, I, I, if there was another part, I, I guess I need to listen to that again, uh, but I didn't, I didn't hear anything else in there. I certainly not heard no legal precedent that said we couldn't do this or it's beyond our, the authority of the town council to adopt this, if you will, as an action plan to go forward and coordinate with other communities. That's what's got at least confusing to me as a, okay. as a lawyer. I, I feel like we're grabbing onto jelly here uh, with what this so-called legal opinion is. I'm very confused by that. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. So I just, I mean, the advice we got was that this wasn't, I mean, 
I, my two cents is that it's also just that adoption is not some magical thing that suddenly makes things happen. It's, it's we've accepted the plan. We know there's, there's the actions that has to be taken by the town on it. Just the fact that it's not adopted doesn't make it important. It doesn't make it doesn't mean that it's not a good plan. I mean, you know, the the down the fire district, they, I, they they say it's a good plan, and I agree with them. It's a good plan. It's just saying it's a good plan and saying we adopt this plan are two different things. And I don't think adoption is the important thing here. The important thing is we continue to act on it. You know, we all keep saying the same thing, and we agree with each other on almost everything. If the town, Sharif in particular could simply say, I'm working on it. My goal is to get it done by X period of time. I hope I can get it done by then. It would solve my problem as a committee member that I know that the town is actively working on it. Because everything else, we were talking about the same things and agreeing on most of them anyway. So I, I rehashing it, I just don't think gets us there. The, the problem is it's in the hands of the town staff. They got a million things to do, but they need to tell us at least what they're thinking they can get it, when they can get it done. That's, it, it, that would be very helpful to me. Uh, Bill, can I make a comment? Go ahead, Chris. Hey, Chris is... Go, Chris. Thanks. Yeah, I, I'm wondering if, you know, we're, we're about to start a new year. And I'm wondering if we would make a lot of progress if we had a joint set of goals that were, were stated in public. Yeah. You know, one from the town council that said one of the things we want to accomplish this year is, and, and I'm kind of with some of the things that have been said. I don't know if adoption is the ultimate answer, but one of the important things for the town council this year is to have an evacuation plan and to publicize it and educate the community. And if the goals for, for the 2024 EPC echoed that, and we had both jointly stated that we're headed the same way, that might get us a long way towards, you know, we're all both working on the same thing, right? Once, once it's written and publicly stated, we'd have a goal in common. We wouldn't be arguing about whether it's even important. I, I think, I think we're, we've gone a little bit sideways yelling at each other about who's um, who thinks it's more important and and whether or not it was properly acted upon last April. And, and maybe we need just to move past that. And if we were to start afresh with a joint set of goals that were in fact made public and then agreed to timeline, that might get us past this uh, impasse. Just a, just a thought. Bud, you had a comment? Yeah, I think that... Uh... Speaking like there um, one of the things we keep talking about is is that it's the staff that, that has to do all the work. Can we add that to our list of things that the town manager will talk to us in January? Because and they're the ones. Everything you keep saying is the staff has to do it. The staff has to do it. Staff has to do it, and and, and they're short staffed and 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 Nick and uh, and all that sort of stuff. So can we add that to the list of things that we asked him to do, explain to us what his schedule is for uh, this um, evacuation plan from the town point of view? That, that's up to the, unfortunately, the town council. He takes his direction from the town council. No, no. We have, he's going to come to speak to us. Yeah. Can, can we ask him to find out what his plan is uh, as far as, as what the town council has been asking him to do? We can put it on the list whether he'll address it or not is, is I don't know. So well, was, was, I, was my comment I, heard? Did I freeze up? You froze for a minute, but but it was what you said was clear. I, a I, joint I, joint set of goals. Yeah, yeah, you you were good, and and I think that seems reasonable. I also think that we could meet, you know, and maybe it's in the new year, but we could meet and and outline different like how do we basically get this information out to the public? That's something that you guys can do. Like how do we public, you know, basically promote this, whether it's through PV forum or other mechanisms, but you know, how do we get that information out there? I mean, so there's there's a bunch of stuff I think we could do. And if we can basically agree on the goal, and we already have an agreement with the fire department on, you know, which like I said, it's called seven plus thirteen. But one of the things that's in there is the evacuation plan. And the other thing is the safety element that's coming up. 
And these things all tie in. So they're all they're all in flight. They're all going to happen. So I mean, so I, I like Chris's suggestion. I think that that seems like a reasonable place to start. Um, you know, I'm fine with the set of goals. Uh, a new chairman is going to take over next year, and, and that can be fine. Uh, personally, you know, we've been several of us have been working on this for over two years, and it's just a little frustrating. I felt we've we've reached an impasse. We've asked for some direction, and more committee meetings. We spent two years in committee meetings to get to this point, but you know, we'll we'll address it in the new year. I don't know what the conclusion of this entire hour long conversation is. Can I, can I just make a comment? Thanks, Chris, for your, your suggestion. I, I think it would be really great to have a common set of goals, but, but, um, but the thing that is confusing me right now is who's going to do what? Uh, I'm not trying to throw uh, an objection towards anybody. And it's, I, don't, I think it would be good if we had a common set of goals, but uh, the, the staff is, is bottled up. Uh, you know, I dedicated three months, you know, you know, full time to trying to pull this together. I don't know physically what I can do to make things work and make it better. I'm not trying to make an aspersion a, a, a here. Um, a, a set of goals is one thing, but along with that set of goals is a way to try to break it up, to try to understand who's going to do what. Um, I think that you find here in the EPC, a group of individuals who are highly intelligent, they have a lot of skills and they want to help, but they don't physically really know what to do to get to the goal line. And so if we do set a, a set of goals, which I agree with 100%, Chris, I'm not trying to negate that. Along with that, we got to start figuring out who's going to do what so that we can get to where we want to do. And, you know, this subcommittee in the EPC sort of was the group that ran around working with various groups, getting educated, thanks, Woodside Fire, um, and pulled things together. I don't know what to do right now. And so if we do do this new set of goals, let's start to talk about trying to, to divvy up to try to figure out, I know that you guys are overloaded. I know that the town staff is overloaded. But, you know, to be honest with you, we had Jeremy involved for a long time. And so I thought we were just streaming right along to where we wanted to get. And I don't know physically really what to do. If you give me a set of goals, I don't know who's going to do what. And I don't know what we really have to do to get to the goal line. I, I, I just I, to come out. I, I, I do think that the committee has to respect the problems that the current staff has on getting things done and to realize that um, even though it is maybe the most important thing we're talking about, it may not be the most important thing they're talking about. And so the only thing I'm asking is to make sure that we can see that we're in the mix, that there is you know, some definite steps that are gonna be taken and a stake has been put in the ground in terms of we think that we can get it done by X period of time, I would feel comfortable because I know there are other more important things to be quite honest that the council has to get done. Yeah, and, and Rob, I, what I would say is if, if we agree on these goals, so, so we sort of, if we agree on the goals, so we sort of, you know, set, like we all start from there, then I think we could sit in the two sub subcommittees could basically meet and we could sort of break that down because we know we've got to figure out like, who do we need to get MOUs from? Like we could just, we just list them, right? I mean, it's not complicated, but we could just do that and we can get, staff and we can get Sharif, we can just go to him and say, look, these are the things we think we need to get done. Some of it's going to get done with the district because we've already got a plan for doing that. But even from the district, it's like they've asked for an evacuation plan. So we need to make sure that it's like, okay, what form exactly do you want your evacuation plan in to make sure that they're in agreement? I think we can list, I don't know, it's a dozen things. And then I think we would have a bunch of smaller items, not just lofty goals to, to move forward on. So I'm certainly willing to do that. Um, I don't know where you guys are at. I, I would I would appreciate that. And I think one of the other advantages of the goals, and I'm sorry I keep going back to that, is in fact, we, we do all work for the town council. So if the town council 
issues a set of goals saying, this is important, this is one of the things we want to accomplish, that will help set the priorities for, for us and for the town manager and for the staff, and they should all be aligned. It feels a little bit like perhaps we're delivering something right now that's in a form that's not what the town council wants. I, I'm not 100% sure, but I, that's why I just want to back it up a little bit and say, okay, let's just agree. Here's what we both want. It's set by the town council, which is for whom we work, and they report to the, the public through elections. And then we at least will all be aligned, and what we bring forward then should should be something they'd be willing to consider, adopt, whatever whatever the right answer is. But I think the the ultimate goal is to have it, to publicize it, and to educate everyone on it. Yeah, I think there's a really important point here to make. And I, I can say when I brought, was brought into this in you know, February, March timeframe, what was communicated to me by, uh, by, you know, Rob was that the former town manager was blocking the progress that this committee wanted to make. And so it's, it, I, I think we should make an effort to, to set those goals, but the, the, the history of this was that this committee it's my understanding prior to this was trying to make good faith important progress on this important public safety area of evacuation, but was blocked by the town staff. And that's through uh, you know, the former town manager um, controlling discussions with other stakeholders, not sharing information and not, again, committing to timelines, giving confusing answers to, 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 to legal questions. And so you know, what happened was in, in the absence of a town manager, we took it upon ourselves to, to really try to pull together a, a, a document that we thought would, would serve as a, a, a starting point and a launching pad for making the substantive progress in that would, that can, that can save lives in an evacuation. And I think, uh, and, but the, you know, what's happened is that we've been blocked again, and now we've been blocked for six months and terms of making this progress and 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 there there are a list of substantive things that, that, that we would like to do but it's it's hard to see the path forward when the work that we have already done we're getting such confusing conflicting contradictory statements about about again it's that, it, that it's not legal but that it's published that okay, it's we're gonna we're yeah. gonna have to wrap so, up and, and move on i've got a hard is, stop first, I'll let first you a couple of things if i may I, I really don't appreciate the implication that things are being blocked. Um, Jeremy did a lot of work on fire safety. He was actually very good at it. He's he right. quite an expert on it. Don't appreciate the idea. I mean, the one of the disconnects here is that the, the council council's purview in everything related to town is policy, and the staff's purview is operations. And the, the disconnect, the, the 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 slowdown we're having right now is the fact that you've got a good plan that is high level that needs to be operationalized. And that's not something Craig or I can do. It takes, it's, it's detailed and it really takes the buy-in of, of both staffs. And so we're at this point where a, a plan that is basically a policy needs to be operationalized. It's unusual for a volunteer group like this, and I appreciate it, but it is unusual for a group like this to be involved in operations on something like that. And that's part of the difficulty and confusion. And part of the reason why some of Jeremy's responses might've been confusing is that you were, you were crossing this line between policy and operations. And, and that is just, I mean, it's unfortunate it happened, but it was probably also unavoidable. I, I mean, I agree with the goals, but you've got to keep in mind that, that this group's purview is to advise the council on policy matters around emergency preparedness. And the council's job is to set policy. And that operational part of it is something that we pass on to staff. We can work together on how to operationalize this plan. And that is what the council, in fact, asked Craig and me to do in September. And that is what we're committing to. And I think Chris's idea of common goals is good, but keep in mind the goals our goals and they are policies and the operational part of it does rely heavily on staff. And, you know, we have not, we, we didn't have a town manager for six months. We've also lost our planning director who did a lot of our fire safety, again, unorthodox, but that's how we've had to do it. Um, we are down two very important people. We are working to replace them. Um, it's just, no one, it's not that no one cares about this. It's not that people don't think it's important. It's just going to take time. And okay. some of it, frankly, is beyond our control. Let me, let me briefly comment because I do want to, I do have a different view than Randy on this, and I, I do appreciate what you're saying. Um, I think there, there have been some cross wires in here. Uh, I have a different view of, the, of what the prior town manager did bring, which I thought as a whole was very much more positive. And some of my colleagues may feel it's irrelevant right now. What's important is, uh, is to, to move forward. And I think this recommendation that we set up an effort of joint set of goals 
uh, is the, the appropriate next step. Um, and uh, I would ask uh, our chairman, if we could, to perhaps act on that. I don't know whether we need to move or what might be the way to make this happen, but it seems to me that is what uh, will really get us to that next step uh, with goals that we can identify in a time frame that we can identify together, collaborating between our committee and the town council uh, to move beyond where we are. I think uh, we've, we've hit enough what the history is, and I think we need to move forward. I would move that we uh, go forward uh, with a subcommittee of ours. Uh, maybe it's the same group that we had before. You have to do that. Oh, all right, uh, a subcommittee to uh, move forward to set up these <coughs> joint set of goals uh, and report back uh, to us uh, as to how we implement in coordination with the town council and our liaison to get this on a, a more positive vein, recognizing the history here. That's my motion. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. In, in your own interim, could I ask for something this might not be appropriate, but is there any way that Vic could have access to the town attorney to try to get more educated on her feedback? I, I wouldn't see there's any any problem with that. I assume it's a public opinion. I, I don't I don't think it's a problem for you to reach out to Catherine. No. Thank you. It really is to understand, not to criticize. I, I think it's I think it's reasonable. Does that have to be a motion? No, no, no. We no. Don't need a motion. no. I always hesitate in these things only to protect the time and, and cost of, of, of our attorney. But, but no, I think it's, no, I think it's reasonable. I think it's reasonable. I, I fully appreciate that. Okay, we're done with this item. Let's move on to item uh, number eight, support for EPC. I think the uh, letter went to the town council. We don't have Selena here. I don't know whether there's any update from the town council on their view on the support for EPIC. Anything new? Nothing new. Okay, number item number nine should be fairly simple. In the back of your packet, there was a uh, summary of the message processing for the AM radio that Ray put together. Mm -hmm. uh, we just need like to get this committee's approval and they then we will forward that on to the appropriate uh, folks, primarily uh, Carrie Chin and, and those of us who can do AM processing. Do I have a motion? So move. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. And then again, thanks to Ray for putting this together and mm -hmm. being in charge of the AM radio. And one quick comment. Um, Ray sent an email this morning saying that our AM radio FCC license has been approved. That was the relocation from Granada to town center with the high power, higher power, the, the better antenna. So all that's been approved. We are now in legal good standing. So uh, that's a very positive development. Okay, item number 10, Jerry, it's gone. I don't think there's been any action on there. Item number 11, this was the memo uh, that Craig wrote is attached to the packet. It's fairly extensive. Uh, Lynn has also been involved. Unfortunately, Craig got called to a meeting this morning and couldn't be here to talk about it. I think it's excellent to yeah. forward on. The only, the only question I had when I was talking to Craig the other day is he gives I think six alternatives and a matrix uh, do we want to cut that down? What would this committee like to do? I'd like to see it approved today so we can send it on. Uh, I just don't know whether we want to send, and maybe Craig has an opinion on this since it, that'll have to go through other subcommittees to get an approval for the town AM radio signs. Is are fewer options better than multiple options or multiple options better than fewer? I think fewer options better than multiple say we could but, but it, it isn't, very, very confusing. But isn't this gonna to go to another committee anyway? Yeah. Why not let them take a look at it? You know up to you. Craig, any thoughts? Any guidance? So one thing we probably need to be careful is now that there's two Craig. So it was Craig 
with the memo. Yes. Um, right. So just <laughs> it's just so if people are trying to fo follow the Craigs here, there's two different Craigs involved. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's going to go to ASCC. I mean, that seems like the likely place. Um, hey, hang on. Can I ask one question from a from a process standpoint? Who should the memo go to? So should we send it? to the town council and then you forward it on to the ASCC. I don't think we can just send a memo to ASCC, can so we? Should go to staff for a staff report? Yeah. 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 So I, I think it's going to go through staff to so we ASCC. Should send to Sharif with a copy yeah. to you and yeah. Jeff. Yeah. And then, then you forward it on to ASCC. Yeah. I think that seems like the right approach. Um, okay. And then I would just make, in terms of how you know whether you do more, you know, fewer options or more options. I think the issue there is you want to give ASCC enough choices so that they can approve something, um, rather than oh here it's A or B and they go well we don't like either and then it gets kicked out. So that would be my only advice is just make sure that you give them enough choices that you you know I, I look yeah I mean that you feel like you give them enough choices so that they're likely to pick one of those. Um, that, you know, that's, I mean, I, I can't tell you what ASCC is going to pick, but, but that's the way I think about these things is you go before a body, you want to make sure that there's, there's enough there for them to, to work through. Any other comments from the committee? I, I would assume that we should just send it to ASCC. Let's send it in its current form. Chris, do you have any thoughts? I think I think in an ideal world we'd probably limit it down by one or two options, but in the interest of getting things done as opposed to trying to make it perfect, I'd say approve it as is and move it on. Okay, do we have a motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it will be approved as written and I'll have Craig send it from the EPC to Sharif, copy Craig, and Taylor and Jeff on that item. Okay. Uh, on to, and we've been carrying this, the Hawthorne's parking plan. Uh, I know Craig has been attending some of the meetings on this. I saw a couple of memos flying back and forth, primarily from the uh, BPS uh, subcommittee on this. Anybody have any thoughts on this? We don't have any speakers here today. Karen Askey has been here and, and uh, Karen Batra in the past to talk about this. No updates, no comments. We'll continue to carry it. I think there's a meeting coming up in December here. Um, and I think that one of the things Rob Young is working on in his little note about what's going on with EVAC subcommittee is getting the ladder so we understand traffic patterns and, and plugging in traffic from the Hawthorns additionally. So that, that, that's, that's coming along. Um, I've been updating certain things in the software. Okay. Uh, but uh, I thought that this had to get done by the end of this year. Uh, I found out that the town has actually extended this for three years. So that there's, I will be working hard. My goal is still to get this done this year, is to see what effect additional traffic and parking lots will have. Uh, and so I'll have early results that we can start to challenge. Okay, very good. Uh, subcommittee reports, any other subcommittees that have any information, pass on. I can, Randy. I can give a brief uh, report on the second um, PVSD school evacuation meeting. Oh, great. Um, I, and I can perhaps work with Selena and or Roberta on sharing some of the information that got reported out at that meeting. Okay. Um, but this one was uh, done via Zoom or, I don't, or maybe Google Meet. Um, but I don't think the recording of it's been been uh, released yet. But I, I think the plan is to release it. And so, um, uh, I I asked the the sort of leadership there a number of questions that I think we can follow up on. I had some good discussions with uh, with uh, uh, Selena about about uh, outreach to parents. More several more parents are getting engaged and had some some good questions themselves. And you know, some I think uh, have all. Are, are in the set of content that, that has been addressed and some are new, um, I think. Uh, so there's, you know, there's work to do in terms of compiling those and then making that 
information available in a form that's easy for parents to understand. And I think there are, you know, continued open questions that that involve, you know, coordination between between the, the fire district and the school district, and then you know, concerns and questions that parents have, and that, that some of which I share, some of which uh, I think I can help address with the parents. So um, there's there's progress on that. But again, this you know this is this gets to some of what we were discussing earlier. It's you know it's work and it's and it's uh, and it's time commitment. And and you know I'm happy to have to to be working on that aspect again because this was something that that I've been wanting to do since since getting involved in this. I think we can make significant progress on it next year, but ha having worked out some of the, some of the issues and found a better process at the higher level with with the council, I think would be would be supportive of all of this kind of integrated evacuation work. Yeah, great. Thank you, Randy. Any other items? Quick quorum check. Anybody going to be missing for January fourth? Rob. I'll be here. You'll be here? Okay. Anybody else? You'll be missing? Okay. You'll be here for you. Okay. Should. You'll be missing? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, my God. You know what? I want to say thank you so much. Thank you, Don. Josh, this is Don's last meeting. Don. So thank you so much. Enjoy that freedom. Exactly. In health. So I had one more thing I wanted to add as liaison. Um, either the 10th or the 24th, this sort of non-Brown Act um, committee discussion is going to come to the council. Um, so I don't know if you guys have been talking to Patty Dews. You know, this is kind of you know coming up through a groundswell of you know whether you guys are going to be Brown Act or non-Brown Act. Um, but I just wanted to let you know it's either the 10th or the 24th. Of January? Of January. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Do I don't know get... exactly how the, I'm sorry, how the council is going to um, deal with uh, safety committees versus non. Like, I, I haven't yet seen, because it hasn't come to council yet, how they're going to determine which um, committees stay underneath the council and which move underneath the manager. But any, I just wanted to let you know, guys know what was going on and that you probably want to be involved. Thank you. Yeah, we, I think we've sent our comments to Patty. I know I've had a com conversation with her, and I know earlier this year, Jerry Sheffern went to all the, those ad hoc committee meetings where they were talking about it. So I just had kind of an offhand conversation with her a couple of days ago, and she didn't, I, I didn't get the feeling like she knew what you, where you guys were at. So oh, I, really? Well, I'll yeah, let her so know. Yeah, so just, just maybe just needs to get refreshed. I, I've told her a couple of times, this, this committee's feeling in the past, if I'm incorrect, you can correct me, was that we would prefer to be a non-Brown Act committee, but that we're going to continue to act in a Brown Act capacity. Because the non-Brown Act, what it allows us to do is actually have people like Chris be remote, participate for quorum and for voting. It, we just don't have to notice it. Uh, Everything else associated with with Brown Act would be we would still take minutes, we would still publish them ahead of time, we would still record the meeting, um, and that's that's about it. Yeah. Right. And I, I think progress on this area can can really help, you know, especially in what what went wrong with the evacuation plan this this summer. I mean, Craig, receiving your comment after we approved it, the fifty one comments, but you. I, I think those were substantive. I think I think those were a Brown Act violation. And then when I solicited comment, solicited to get comments, um, Council Member Hasco provided comments, and, and Council Member Wernickoff said that she couldn't because of Brown Act. So there's, I think there's just some well, significant that, process. That, that's a yeah. separate issue. This is the non-Brown Act would only affect our committee and our operations. Yeah, so. but, but I think what's critical to look at is what process should an important document, an important plan go through once a committee, say a safety committee, approves and endorses it. Because I think if we could answer that question, I think it would also help resolve a lot of the conflict that we've had over the last six months in, in dealing with the evacuation plan. And so that's, I mean, I guess, Craig, I'd like, you know, since we've, you know, discussed governance issues, you know, so much meeting, you know, personally four times for a total of, I think, eight hours, I, I would like to ask you to to 
you know, you know, personally to say, how, how should this have gone? Uh, and and I, I understand that we want to move forward. We want to make progress, but it's, 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 it's difficult with, without addressing the, you know, when something this important, you know, has gone sideways this, this significantly. Anything else, folks? Okay, very good. I have a motion. Ooh, adjourned. Adjourned. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much, and we will see you next year. All right. With one exception. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a good holiday.